This is called A Transforming Story. I love beginnings and endings. I'm a cuss baby. Change me. Change me again. To me in the middle, being in the middle feels like being in the mess. Maybe I'd love to learn how to be just there. Like everyone, there are so many moments of transformation life has brought me through. Like kissing a boy underwater and jumping back up into the air laughing when I was six. Like hearing Donna Summer's music and feeling the rhythm and having to get up and dance. Like reading a roomy poem and bursting into tears of ecstasy, sorrow, and joy. Like teaching kundalini yoga. I receive as I give people a transforming experience of the beginning and the end. Breathe in, breathe out. Just that. The primal beginning and end. It's all there. It's all there is. Really how you can connect to your whole self in the present moment. What leads you to opening your heart, healing the injuries so you can just be where your feet are. I also love to laugh and to imagine. I care about the truth. I care about understanding my beginning and my end. I like being free and on my own. I like loving the community of people I love. I know how lonely I feel, and that even though I'm alone, I'm never alone. I'm okay. I am. Back when I was taking yoga classes, there was an annual event in New York City called White Tantric Yoga. Being given at Gramercy Hotel, the man who brought Kundalini Yoga to America would be coming, and it was a big deal. The short version of his name is Yogi Bhajan. We lined up and did yoga and chanting until he arrived. Finally, he arrived with a group of beautiful, flowing, turban-wearing yogis and yoginis surrounding him. <clears throat> he spoke of the importance of discipline to transform our lives through breath and sound, that we were meant to be our true self, to live happy, healthy, and holy lives, simple, clean, and real. It spoke to me because I felt so complicated and messy inside. Needing to learn how to be simple and real. At the break they announced if anyone wanted to get a spiritual name to line up and Yogi Bhajan would figure it out according to your birthday. I jumped into the line. When it came time for me to get my name, I stood in front of this very big, movie star handsome, dark skinned, white turbaned man who looked at me and asked, what do you want? I had no idea what to say. Peace on earth? A house on the cape? I remember feeling my shallow self barely finding words, saying perform, theater, acting for people I want to. He said, wait a minute, I lost my place. <laughs> By this time his hands were on my shoulders. He's saying, no you don't. What do you want? I didn't know what to do or say, and now his big thumbs were pressing on my chest. And he's saying to somebody sitting near him, all these noddies are closed. I felt weird, embarrassed, excited, ashamed, curious, eager, relieved, and stupid. Someone's actually asking me the important question, what the hell do I want? As he pressed on the nerve endings that made a wide smile on my chest, I felt something. He brought his head to my ear and spoke. You will be powerful, individual, don't forget God, never forget God. He sat back and took a handful of large cashews to his mouth. And one of his assistants handed me a paper with my spiritual name, Hari Namkar. All I can think is, holy shit, what the hell do I do with this? As I turned around, I could barely stand. I was spaced out and gently crying. I had just received something from a complete stranger who was offering some profound information for nothing. Wait, I did pay for the course. And I thought, 
I'm totally trusting him because I wanted to. It was the truth. I started teaching Kundalini Yoga many years later and continued studying. So when a student in my class has an experience of connecting to the beginning and the end of him or herself, I'm doing my job. If I see someone with a face that's spaced out and smiling at the end of class, or is started and can't stop crying and asks why, I say it's a good thing. You're transforming before your very own eyes. 